All right, so the question we're going to be considering is one where there's a block of mass M and a spring gun, and we're trying to find the distance L from the, the end of the spring gun that the block will travel before it stops um, and starts reverse direction. Um, and we're going to try and solve this in terms of the coefficient of kinetic friction, um, the mass of the block, the acceleration due to gravity, the distance of compression, the constant K um, of compression, and um, angle, the angle of the incline. Um, we're not going to be using any numbers. Um, so, in order to start this question, we have to consider the fact that the initial energy of this block, energy initial, is going to be equal to the energy final of the block when it stops moving, um, plus some work, some external work, in this case friction, um, that is done on the block. And for simplicity's sake, we're in this question we're considering um, a situation where the spring gun, the surface of the incline, and the spring gun itself is going to be frictionless, and the friction only starts when the block is released from um, the spring gun. So. In order to do this, um, we're going to put the, uh, since we, we can put the gravitational potential energy, we can set that to zero at any, any height we want, we're going to put that at zero over here. So the gravitational potential energy equals zero. So at this stage, the energy initial, the initial energy is only comprised of the spring potential energy, which is given by one half the compression constant times the um, distance it's compressed squared. That's the spring potential energy, um, which is derived from the fact that we know um, the work done by the spring is negative kx, so you just integrate that, and this is what you get. So you set this equal to the energy final, which is all potential, since there's no kinetic, because there's zero velocity, so the one half mv squared, that would be there. So the v is zero, you can cross that out. And then we're doing that plus the potential energy at that point, which is this distance. So to, uh, to determine that distance, you have to take the sine of, of this angle and multiply it by xc plus l, since that's the ratio of the um, opposite length to the hypotenuse. So this would be mg times the height, which is L plus xc sine theta. Also, you have to consider um, the energy loss to, uh, to friction. So in order to, or let me write this, force of friction is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction. In order to find the uh, normal force and the force of friction, uh, we need to draw a free body diagram. So, is this in the video? So, this would be the block. You have some force of gravity, Fg. And then the normal force. And then the force of friction, which would be this or actually no, it's not that it's just find the, to find the normal force, you, we need to split Fg into its um, components. And we're going to use the axis I and J. So this is Fgi and F, G, J. And then we know this angle right here is theta, which means this angle right here is theta. Oh, sorry. This angle here is theta. So F, G, I is equal to the cosine, or 
the force of gravity, which is just mg, times cosine of theta. And then um, fn must equal fgi since the block is neither going through the surface of the incline or flying off randomly in some, some random direction. So fn equals mg cosine theta. And since FF is equal to FN UK, we now know that um, MG cosine theta mu K is equal to the force of friction. Now since we're considering it from an energy standpoint, we need to dot the force of friction with um, the the vector displacement. So it would be the force of friction, mg cos theta uk. I'm still in here. Alright, sorry. Mg cos theta. What's that there? Mg cos theta mu k dotted with um, the force of, or the distance, the displacement, which is just L. Since this little area xc right here is frictionless, so you dot that with l, just multiply it by the length. And since there's a cosine of uh, zero, since they're in the same direction, um, then um, it comes out just being mg cos theta mu k times one times l. And then we must solve for l, which we'll do over here. So one half k x squared is equal to mg. That's equal to L. 